Do you know who's behind your email? What do they fund? Are they building a culture you want to be a part of? This Advent, break up with big tech and reboot your email with FIDE. Look us up, F-I-D-E-I. And there's a link in the description box below. That's FIDE, how Catholics send email. I mentioned this topic in passing a little bit in my live stream from this past Thursday where I detailed that Francis had made public his own funeral plans, which were contentious, but for the wrong reasons. His desire to lie in state at St. Mary Major isn't exactly that big of a deal. He'd be the first alleged pontiff to reside there since the 17th century, with popes from that time until now lying in repose at St. Peter's Basilica. But prior to that, some popes did reside in St. Mary Major. So that's not that big of a deal. The big deal, as I recounted in the live stream, is that he is simplifying the papal burial rites in another clear move of de-emphasizing the supernatural role of the papacy. We see presidents of countries get more fanfare at their final send-off than popes will under his proposal, at least if you read it a certain way. Go check that live stream out if you want to know more about that and as well as other major things involving that. Today, instead, let's talk about yet another change to doctrine passed by Francis's new doctrine chief, the poet of adult-themed poetry, adult uh, Cardinal Fernandez, the prefect for the dicastery of the doctrine of the faith. He issued some new guidelines about cremation. Now, for those who aren't aware, the church has been categorically against that practice without any real exception until, until times of severe social conditions until the 1990s, when the catechism of John Paul II changed the rules on that for the first time in history. It went from basically being prohibited to allowed with, quote, good reason. Though, as is the case with virtually all post-conciliar rulings, the guidelines for that rule are ambiguous at best. It's one reason that most, if not all, traditional Catholics don't really trust the catechism of the Catholic Church. That issue, cremation, isn't the only issue in that catechism that does show a clear break from prior teachings on various issues either, though that topic is one for another time. Most traditional Catholics swear by catechisms, older ones, such as the Catechism of the Council of Trent, the Catechism of St. Pius X, or even the Baltimore Catechism, and now among them appears to be Bishop Athanasius Schneider's book Credo, just to name a few. Let's go over what the Church says about this issue, though, or did prior to the 1990s. To say that the Church had been against this practice 100% of the time isn't exactly accurate. During the pestilences of the Middle Ages, the Church always allowed for this under that grave social circumstance. But in general, other than in those conditions, cremation was considered an abuse and described as detestable. The Code of Canon Law of 1917 described this practice in this way, quote, Canon 1203, subsection 1 of the Code of Canon Law 1917, states the bodies of the faithful departed shall be buried, their cremation being reprobated. Subsection 2, if anyone by any manner orders that his body be cremated, it is illicit to execute that desire. And if this was added to any contract or testament or any other act, it is considered as not being added, end quote. You can find Pope Leo XIII describing the practice as detestable, one that no Christian can support, in his writings from the late 19th century. That pontiff was prolific, by the way, with 81 encyclicals issued during his nearly 30-year reign. But why are Catholics opposed to this practice? Because Christians bury those who pass away. It was one of our distinguishing features going back to Rome and the martyrs in the first century. It's what separated us from other other religions, if you want to call them that. This article from the SSPX website describes a traditional view of this practice in this way. And I do have to clean up the language used here just a bit to conform to the rules of this place, so be advised. But here's what the, the traditional teaching is. Quote, because cremation is contrary to Christian tradition, the church has always buried its dead. The first Christians buried their dead in the catacombs. They had a horror of the pagan custom of burning remains. In second, in second place, the cremation is contrary to the funeral liturgy. The rite of burial and the beautiful funeral prayers are wonderfully suited to inculcating in the soul of the faithful the great religious truth, the immortality of the soul, the future resurrection, the dignity of the human body. These things are all recalled to Catholics by these liturgical prayers. No doubt cremation does not suppress these truths, but does it symbolize them? Not at all. It is, on the contrary, the emblem of ultimate destruction. It suggests total annihilation. It seems to say to its practitioners, do not believe in the survival of man. Abandon all hope of resurrection and of life. Moreover, who are the most ardent supporters of this practice? The enemies of our religion, so-called freethinkers and stonecutters. 
Have not these adversaries loudly announced that the great advantage of cremation is to keep priests away from funerals and to replace Christian burial by a secular service? Finally, we are opposed to cremation because it is a barbaric practice. It is morally revolting. Never can the human heart, at least one that has not been def deformed by passions or prejudice, accept this abominable affront to human dignity. To dispose of one in an implement used for these practices, to reduce it to ashes and get rid of it as soon as possible, as one would get rid of a contaminated animal, is not such a practice revolting and nauseating. And mostly, quote, so, what happened exactly? Well, recently Cardinal Fernandez issued new rules on this practice. The church in the 1990s said that ashes had to be kept together, not spread about. That was itself, by the way, a break from sacred tradition, given that it endorsed the basic practice itself. But now we get this story, headline from LifeSite News. Vatican relaxes rules on storing ashes of the dead and striking departure from tradition. A defined and permanent sacred place can be set aside for the commingled accumulation and preservation of the ashes of the deceased baptized persons, indicating the identity of each person so as not to lose the memory of their names, Cardinal Fernandez wrote. Commingled, think about that for a moment. Remember, according to the documents of Vatican II, we now have a better understanding of human dignity than other generations in the church did prior to that and people in general. Humanity in general allegedly has a better understanding of human dignity can't even say that with a straight face. It's actually such a laughable claim, given that the statement was made in the 1960s, right before the Moloch ritual became normalized in Western culture, before indecent and pure films and magazines suddenly became widely accepted in the Western world and sold at almost any store you went to, before we commodified every aspect of human life, including being fruitful and multiplying. And the church even contradicted this by softening the rules on cremation during all of that, and now even more so with this ruling by Fernandez, who never saw a doctrine of the church he didn't think needed to be made more in line with the secular world. So from their article, quote, published December 12th, but signed December 9th, the new prefect, the dicastery, formerly congregation, for the doctrine of the faith issued a response to two questions, or dubia, submitted on October 30th by Cardinal Matteo Zuppi, who some say may be the next pope, by the way, the Archbishop of Bologna and head of the Italian Bishops' Conference. The text was published first in a summary article on the Italian edition of Vatican News, rather than on the DDF's website. It was approved by Pope Francis during a regular meeting with Fernandez on December 9th. Zuppi had asked, since it is forbidden to scatter ashes, if it is, quote, possible to prepare a defined and permanent sacred place where the commingled accumulation and preservation of ashes of the baptized indicating the basic details of each person so as to not lose the memory of their names, similar to what occurs in ossuaries, where the mineralized remains of the deceased are cumulatively depositive and preserved. The Italian cardinal additionally asked if the family of the departed could, quote, keep a portion of their family members' ashes in a place that is significant for the history of the deceased. To both questions, Fernandez replied in the affirmative. Replying specifically to the first question, he wrote how ashes could be mixed with other ashes. <sighs> Providing the memory of the individual's names was not lost. Quote, A defined and permanent sacred place can be set aside for the commingled accumulation and preservation of the ashes of deceased baptized persons, indicating the identity of each person so as not to lose the memory of their names, meaning they can be mixed together. In issuing his response, Fernandez drew from the 2016 Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith text Ad as Regem Cum Christo, regarding the burial of the deceased and the conservation of the ashes in the case of cremation, issued by then-Prefect Cardinal Gerhard Mueller. That text stipulated that ashes must be kept in a, quote, sacred place and ruled out the storing of ashes in private houses except in, quote, grave and exceptional cases dependent on cultural conditions of a localized nature. In such, quote, grave and exceptional cases, the local bishop would have to coordinate with the relevant bishop's conference or synod in order to grant specific permission for the reserve of ashes in a home. Even then, however, Mueller's note stipulated that, quote, the ashes may not be divided among various family members 
and due respect must be maintained regarding the circumstances of such a converse conservation. Writing his response to Zuppi's question about the storage of ashes, Fernandez appeared to move away from Mueller's directives. He cited that as long as, quote, civil norms rather than ecclesiastical norms were complied with, then the, quote, ecclesial authority could deal with requests from families to keep partial remains of the deceased in, quote, a place significant to the history of the deceased. He wrote, in addition, provided that any kind of pantheistic, naturalistic, or nihilistic misunderstanding a phrase directly copied from Cardinal Mueller's response, is ruled out and the ashes of the deceased are kept in a sacred place, the ecclesiastical authority in compliance with current civil norms may consider and evaluate a request by family to duly preserve a minimal part of the ashes of their relative in a place significant to the history of the deceased. Fernandez did not explicitly deal with whether such, quote, a place significant to the history of the deceased would include the family home, but logically the wording of his text would include such a place, end quote. He's putting doctrines and morality at the service of the secular world, conforming the church's teachings on these things to secular standards first. That's what he's doing here, and that's very dangerous. This is what we would call a precedent. This can be used for other things, and I guarantee you it will. This is a clear break from tradition also. Now, the LifeSite article goes on to recount how the church's teaching on this issue has been undermined over the decades since the council. That article and the other cited here will be in, in my show notes today at returntotradition.org for those interested in reading them. Now, some may say that this isn't that big a deal, but remember what I said about precedent. The secularization of the church isn't focused only on the big, what we'll call titanic rule changes regarding morality. The modernists aren't only concerned with the you know, or opening up ordination to whoever they, the world wants us to ordain or making the James Martin sin okay, they're concerned with every aspect of the faith, and including and especially those that touch on human dignity, and especially aligning ourselves with the secular world. Conform the church to the world on what some might consider to be little matters of morality, such as the topic of this video that we're talking about today, and the bigger issues are easier to accept, especially when you make their acceptance based on the norms of the civil authorities. This is why Pope St. Pius X warned the faithful to give the modernists absolutely no quarter, to not allow them to have any victories whatsoever, because small victories lead to bigger changes. Incrementalism is how they think they're going to win in the end. But what they don't realize is that they will be defeated, of course. I haven't even said, what do you think about this story? Does it surprise you that they would go this far? Do you think that it's not that big of a deal that we're just making too big of a deal of this? Do you think incrementalism is silly? You find it not that big a deal that they're aligning what we say about morality and human dignity and all the rest of it to the ever-changing norms of civil authority. Let me know what you think of this in the comments, please, and hit like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So to sharing this on social media, that helps too. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.